You're listening to Operation Self Reset with Jake Naraki. Now it's time to reset your life. What is going on, Resetters? This is Operation Self Reset, and we are on podcast lucky number 13. And today we have a reoccurring guest, and maybe we will have him on every couple of months here. His name is Nate Hosefell. He is from the Mission Belt Company. You guys can check him out on podcast number three. And why am I interviewing him again 10 episodes later? I thought, why not? You know what? It'd be crazy not to. He had some great information to share with you guys. And again, he will uh, provide some great content for you. But before we dive into that interview, I want to say thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart for taking the time listening to this podcast. And last time we spoke, I asked um, for you guys to send me an email and let me know if you wanted me to do a weekly podcast or a uh, or whenever podcast. <laughs> I was trying to think of the other word, but I couldn't think of it in time. So I asked you guys, you know, should I do a weekly podcast or should I just do it whenever? And a lot of you guys out there wanted me to do a weekly podcast and I was all jacked up. I was like, okay, I can do a weekly podcast. You know, I just got to really manage my time and I'll figure it out. And then one and then a couple of other people emailed me and said, you know what, Jake, you do such a good job. Thank you very much to the people that have said that to me. And um, they said, you know what, just make sure that, you know, it's like quality versus quantity. You know, you don't want to start pumping out these podcasts. The next thing you know, it turns into a job. And then I lose the motivation. I lose the passion for trying to help you guys reset, transform and change your lives. So I thought to myself, you know what? Instead of forcing it out once a week and feeling rushed and feeling like, you know what, I just got to get it out there because you guys want a weekly podcast, I thought I'm going to take my time. I'm going to provide some great, great content for you guys and try to knock it out of the park park every single time. So I'm going to do that instead of doing a weekly podcast. Um, I will still try to provide a weekly podcast, but I'm not going to force it out if I don't have the time just because, you know what, I'd rather be passionate and help you guys transform instead of going, hey, this is Jake, okay, here's the next podcast, and then 10 minutes later, it turns into junk, and then you guys leave me forever, and I will never talk to you guys again, so um, it's going to be kind of uh, a random basis uh, podcast here, so stay tuned, I will try my hardest to keep on pumping them out as soon as I can, but so to give a little background on myself here lately, what's been going on in the world of Jake Naraki? Well, um, as with anybody and a little, as with a lot of you guys out there, you guys have been emailing me a lot of the problems that are going on in your own lives. Now, I always say this, but I really want to be truthful when I say, you know what, I ask you guys to email me um, issues or problems that are going on in your lives that I can try to help you with. And honestly, every time, every person that has emailed me, I have emailed them back and I always ask, you know what, thanks for the great comments or whatever, but I want to know what's going on with you. You know, what's something I can help with? And over and over and over again, I have been getting comments about time management. You know, it just seems like we never have enough time and I can raise my hand and I'm raising my hand right now and saying that I don't have a lot of time. I feel rushed. I come home. You know, I have a lot of things on my plate. You know, I mean, I'm still going through the bankruptcy with the, you know, the the real estate business. You know, I'm, I'm doing this podcast on the website, responding to you guys. Um, you know, I'm doing a promotional test here within the next two months. So I really have to be dedicated towards that. And I have a new child and a wife to try to um, still be a good husband to. So I have a full plate and I'm not saying poor Jake. I'm just saying I'm like you guys out there a swamped, swamped schedule. So how can we manage our time better? Well, so that's one thing I want to really hit on in the next couple of podcasts here about time management. And before I kind of go into detail about time management, I want to give you a quick little kind of um, a posting that I saw recently that something you guys can kind of take a bite out of. Now, this is a weekly schedule, okay? So it states that you work average of 40 hours a week, okay? You um, eat, shower, travel, um, do general things around the house. That takes about 35 hours per week. And then you sleep about 56 hours per week. So how much time does that leave you um, for yourself? Well, that leaves about 37 hours per week to pursue your dream, whatever it may be, your passion, your own little side project, maybe exploring yourself, figuring out who you are, meditating, exercising, whatever it may be. So 
that's just kind of a cliff note version of time management. And, you know, that comes out to 168 hours per week. So you take it for what it's worth. You know, in that equation there, it's saying 56 hours of sleeping per week. So that's saying you're sleeping about eight hours per night. Now, that's pretty generous considering I know a lot of people out there, especially myself, are not getting the full eight hours. And that's okay. The key is just knowing how much time you really need to sleep. Everybody's different. You know what? Some people can sleep off of four hours. Some people need the full eight hours. Some people out there, you know who you are. You need to sleep like 10 hours just to be functioning in the morning. So um, if we can try to find ways to shave down some of those um, other time management areas and leave more time for us at the end of the day, that'd be ideal. So that is just a cliff note version of how many hours per week we are spending in different categories. 56 hours in sleeping, 35 hours in eating, showering, traveling, doing general stuff around the house, and then we're doing the 40-hour work week, and that leaves about 37 hours to pursue our own dreams, passions, what have you. So we will dive more into that in the upcoming podcast episodes. If you guys out there have any suggestions for good time management, maybe you have found the secret potion of utilizing every single second of your day. I would love to hear about it. Um, I'll try to compile the data and provide that in the next um, or the next couple of podcasts here. So if you guys listening to this go, Jake, that doesn't even make sense to me. I have the secret sauce on how to utilize the most out of my day to the second. If you could share that with me, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, send me an email at support at operationselfreset.com. And also to you guys listening, if you have any questions for me, you need more help in a certain area of your life, I would love to hear your story. I love to hear your issue and I will respond to you. That is the honest truth. So if you guys take a second, put the pause, ugh, excuse me, push the pause button on this podcast and email me right now support at operationselfreset.com. Let me know what's going on with you um, and I will help you out. I'll try to help you out the best I can. So there you go. Um, so let's dive into the content for today. So today we have Nate Hosefell from the Mission Bell Company. Um, he reached out to me lately. He has been doing the hustle. He's been traveling around, um, you know, writing blog posts for the Huffington Post, um, you know, going on, you know, 60 Minutes. I don't even know if he's been on 60 Minutes, but if 60 Minutes is listening, you should have Nate Hosefell on there because this guy is in tune with understanding, motivation, passion, inspiration, surrounding yourself with good people. And um, I can honestly say this guy is um, a good friend of mine now because him and I kind of connected on multiple levels. And I think I'm going to have a monthly podcast with him. Uh, he has just brings great energy to this podcast. I love talking to him and I hope you guys love listening to him. So here he is, Nate Hosefell. Um, in the beginning here of the podcast interview, we kind of talk about the business, you know, is checking up on things. Um, and if you don't know about Nate, he started a company called Mission Belts. Um, a portion of the sales of his belts goes towards giving back to people that are less fortunate. Um, he lends out the money to people to start um, their farms or businesses in um, countries that are not as, uh, how should I put it, up to date like the United States. And um, when those people become successful, they actually pay back the loans. It's a 0% loan. It's a great thing he's doing. We talk about that. And we talk about, of course, everything that has to deal with life. I hope you guys enjoy all right, hey guys, and welcome back to the podcast. We have a returning guest, second time on the podcast. His name is Nate Hosefell. You know him as the co-founder of Mission Belt Company. Um, had him on podcast number three. He crushed it. He gave us some great information on just how to live our lives better, how to reduce uh, stuff in our life, and how to let go of money, and it will come to all of us. So, Nate, man, welcome back to the podcast, and, and do you mind kind of giving us an update of where, where how the progression has been with the company? company since the last time we talked? Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, we are uh, now you know, a multi-million dollar corporation. We sold uh, a boatload of products. just absolutely insane. Way more than anyone thought we would ever sell. Sure. And it's just, uh, it's turned out to be uh, just huge. And, uh, and the, the, the list of stores that have called us and want to be added uh, to uh, our retailer list is so crazy. I had to hire more people to handle all that. And uh, it's just, just absolutely phenomenal. Oh, for sure. Now, um, can you uh, tell us, like, do you have a figure on how much you collected that you're going to be donating to uh, people in need, or you don't have that? Figure? I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know the exact dollar sure. figure, but I know in the last, I know in the last three months we've helped over, we've helped over 800 families. Wow, awesome, yeah. awesome. That is They're gaining um, their own independency. I mean, they they now have their own 
have their own way of feeding themselves. And sure. it's amazing is they'll, they'll pay that back over time and then that money will just keep going out over and over. We have a 98% return rate on that. Money. Wow. And that it just awesome. stays out there indefinitely. We never pull it back. And so it's just, I mean, you know, a dollar really than a dollar, it's $98 over sure. the course of a couple of years. So it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah, for sure. And also too, you're, uh, you're helping people out and you're probably the, you're probably the best bank right now out there <laughs> for, for people uh, zero like zero interest, uh, you know, no credit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we don't, we don't even require that you have much of an address, just a name and a good story. So yeah, perfect. It's, it's perfect. Pretty good, pretty good system for now. So you don't have to, uh, have your firstborn child co-sign on the uh, dotted uh, line. Or no, <laughs> no. In fact, one of the things we kind of pride ourselves on is we look for people who really need the help. Good. You know, we have our selection process. Um, there's no, you know, we don't, uh, there's, there's no money being held back. All the money goes exactly straight to these people. And uh, we look for, you know, mostly women, you know, and people in underdeveloped areas where to no fault of their own, there's just yeah. no way that they're ever going to get any money. You know, here in America, a guy like you or a guy like me, we can go out and work two or three jobs, rat hole 10 or 15 grand over the course of a year and do something, you sure. know. But in these places, these people aren't, I mean, their dreams not to have a Porsche, their dreams not to have a big house, their dreams to like, have food to eat, you know. Right. So it's, it's a very simple, basic, you know, uh, you know, human condition stuff that we're, that's what we, what we deal with. And oh. that, that's what's so incredible and great about it. It makes a real difference in someone's life. Oh, it's yeah. not artificial. It's real. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I mean, I'm trying to think of something that I personally can do to give back. You know, I, I know how important it is and how good it feels. And in just doing something, you know, I've been very, um, you know, blessed in my life and, and to do something like you have done is just super rewarding. And then also too to pair it with a very successful business. I mean, you got to think to yourself, you know, the more you give, the more you get. So, um, you're, you're doing great. And, uh, that's, that's awesome. You're helping out uh, less fortunate people. So, uh, Nate, though, yeah, that's- go on. That's one of the, but that's one of the incredible things though, man, is that it's not just us. It's our tens of thousands of customers that have bought products from us that make the mission a reality. Sure. So I mean, I mean, you know, a lot of people say, I don't know how to reach out. I don't know how to do something big. You don't have to, you don't have right. to start a company like mine. You don't have to be me to do this. Right. Get a product from us. Buy a product from companies that do these types of things. Um, there's a company called Flex Watches. Flex mm-hmm. Watches are really, really, really cool little watches. They're inexpensive. They're about 40 bucks. You buy one from them and you know, they, they, they give back. They give back. And so there are products out there that you do that. And you want to make a difference? Be conscientious in what you buy. That a is point. a great way to start helping and doing things without having to tip your world upside down. Yeah, very true. And in return, you're getting a great product. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a twofer. It's a twofer for sure. Now, uh, it for sure is. Can you, uh, can I, can you tell us, uh, what's been going on lately? Uh, you know, you've been kind of bouncing all over the place in the media, telling your story, you know, expanding the, the mission, uh, statements around the, uh, probably the world. Um, and, and lately you've been kind of writing for, uh, you know, for some blogs and stuff. Do you mind diving into that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, most recently Huffington Post, they requested that I, that I, uh, you know, submit for them, uh, you know, on a weekly basis. And I, I, you know, about any subject that I like. And, uh, you know, what I like to talk about is I like to talk about things that I believe in. Yeah. I believe in, you know, being the very best version of you. That was an article that I wrote. And, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people will ask me, I get a lot of comments and I get a lot of emails and I get a lot of phone calls and Nate, what's the deal? What's the trick? How do you do that? I want to get on the shark tank. I want to be successful sure. and be happy. You seem to, you seem to admit happiness. How do I become that? And, and the reality of it is, is those things are achievable for everyone. Yeah. You don't have to be rich to get those things. You know, you don't yeah. have to be me in order to, you know, achieve your dreams. Oh, but yeah. There are certain things. There's a philosophy to being happy and that stuff is all real. There is some math in it. Yeah. You know, and everybody wants that secret sauce. You know, they want that uh, straight line approach. But like you just said, you know, said you have it within yourself. You know, the key is just uncovering it and discovering that within. So uh, the article like you just uh, touched on, you know, the very best version of you, um, you know, hits on that stuff. And it really makes you believe in yourself. You know, the couple of the three uh, top things you talked about, you know, stop chasing other people's dreams. Um, you know, a, a great point in there was, you know, like like I said early on here, um, it said never chase the money. I chase success. You know, if you're business model is sound and do the work, um, the money will fall into your lap, uh, plant your seeds and the crop will yield. I mean, just amazing. So true. Um, and it's so funny with any successful company or any startup, everybody wants to know, well, what are the figures? You know, how much are you bring in and what's the revenue? But at the end of the day, that's not what it's about. Obviously for you, 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 you have a mission statement that sound, you know, giving back to uh, people that need the money and you provide a very good product, um, for the people out there. So, um, you know, that, that's really tr- huge. Do you, you want to add anything else to that? You know, stopping other people's dreams. Well, well, the thing about it is, is that literally when I say don't chase the money, like I will, I wouldn't be lying. 
I know where we have sold, uh, how much we've sold up to certain dates. Like I know within like sure. three weeks or three and a half weeks of Shark Tank, I know we hit the million dollar mark. Wow. I knew that. That was a big number, whatever. But if you ask me today where we're at, I really don't even know. Yeah. What I do know is, is it's lots. I don't worry about the daily dollars from here, but I know that if my efforts are good and the things that I'm doing every day, the money flows. Sure. And I've been able to hire all kinds of people. Well, now we've hired a couple of new vice presidents. And a guy took a huge pay cut to come work for us. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh, we have one guy who took an $8,000 pay cut to come work in Mission Belco. You know? Yeah. And it's just, it's phenomenal to see the type of talent and people we've uh, been able to, uh, you know, uh, attract. I think a lot of times with a startup, one of the things that's so hard about it is getting qualified people, getting people to come in. And we've literally just had an outpouring of people who are coming from, I'll be really honest, some very impressive backgrounds. Sure. And so uh, it's, it's awesome and it's cool to see all that. And uh, the reality of it is, is that, you know, it, it, those types of relationships come to you. You know, we don't go out and chase these people. They come to us. It's that whole thing where you would, you, you stop chasing someone else's dream. You find what's important to you and you go out there with the very best intentions and a good plan and it all falls right into your lap. Yeah, and and another thing you hit on here in that article was you know be comfortable with you, and you are as transparent and honest, and you know the same person on the phone, off the phone, on the mic, off the mic, um, and that's why I believe you know these people are you know trying to reach out to you and you know getting the pay cuts because they know that you are just a wholesome individual and you are yourself. I mean, you're not you're not uh, you know full of yourself. You're not trying to be something that you're not. You know, you are truly one hundred percent Nate. You know, every day, every single day of the week, you know, we have talked, um, you know, a, a couple times now and every time you said you have the same energy, you have the same positive, uh, attitude, yeah. um, you know, I mean, that, and that's awesome and that's great. And that's why people are drawn to you. Well, you know, the truth of it is, 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 is I think a lot of times too, basically anyone who works for Mission Belt Co, you know, three things about them. One, they're smarter than me. They're all smarter than me. <laughs> yeah. I only hire people that are smarter than me, which isn't hard to do because almost everyone is. <laughs> but they all bring unique things to the table that are special and good. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and I know about myself. I know what I'm good at. My right. skill set's very limited. I'm very, very good at the things I'm good at, and I recognize that. Right. But, you know, I want detail-oriented people. I bring on a guy, I, well, our new vice president of sales named Shane Monson, super smart, analytical guy, uh, you know, just a fantastic human being. Sure. And we have some really incredible people like that coming on who are just, they're, they're, they're amazing. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that you're going you're gonna to find about anyone who works for Mission Belt Co. is that they're all people who are nice people. Um, some people have asked me, Nate, where's Nate going to be in five years? Or what are you going to do with Mission Belt Co.? Are you going to sell it? What are you going to do? Uh, I don't have any plans to sell Mission Belt Co. right now. But right. at the point, you know, but I often joke when it gets to the point where we have to start hiring people that I don't like personally. Um, you know, that's, it's, it's funny, but nice is the number one quality I look for in a human being. An right. employee, anything, a wife, spouse, friend, you're not sure. nice. I don't care to know you, yeah. you know? And so those two things are very, very, very important. And thirdly, the thing you'll find about every Mission Belt employee, every one of them, every single one of them, they have no ego. Mm -hmm. We don't get involved with anybody who is trying to prove something or do something. We want people who want to make a difference, know how to be happy, and are open Right. Open to learning and growing from anyone. You can harvest information from anywhere. I learn stuff from my gardener. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you can you can pick up information anywhere. It's, it's the whole world. Uh, it's a school, and uh, you know you can you can get information anywhere. So it's it's got to be those things in order to work at Mission Bell Co. And, yeah. Uh, the people that we have, they're pretty stellar individuals and, uh, you know, hope I can hold on to them as long as possible. Oh, for sure. You know, and you hit a lot of good points there. You know, even if uh, the people listening don't have the uh, mission belt uh, idea in their brain that they want to, uh, you know, start up, you know, you can ut utilize everything that you just said, you know, um, you know, hiring good people, you know, being around positive people, you know, no big egos. You're not hiring the Chad Johnsons of the NFL and uh, having them uh, deteriorate your team atmosphere. You know, that that's a life lesson. It doesn't have to just pertain to business, it can pertain to your friends, and um, and it can really help you succeed in life and stuff like that. And one thing you also said, you know, I hire people that are smarter than me, and that's so true. And it's so cool to hear that because a lot of times, especially you know, as a, a male in in the nation here, that you try to you know kind of feel like, oh, I know everything, I know how to fix everything, I know how to do everything. But at the same time, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, you know, you got to be true with yourself. You know, if you don't know how to install a toilet, don't install a toilet. You know, either ask, try yeah, to figure yeah. it out. You know, totally. all that stuff. And like you said, there's great smart individuals out there and surround yourself like them and uh, things will go good the reality of it is, is that that's the that's the name of the game you know i hired the michael jordans of the business sure. world that's who comes to work at mission bell co that's why we take off that's why we do stuff i'm a people expert and so i have a unique ability to meet people quickly find out what the deal is found the scoop is and i'm rarely wrong 
You know, right. um, I'm, I'm, I'm unusually perceptive that way. Everything else, though, I'm practically an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you sound smart as hell on here, so, so you're doing good. <laughs> oh, well, it's, 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 all, it's all an act. Just act yeah, smart. Sure. It'll come off good. <laughs> no, for sure. For sure. There you go. There you go. So what else you got planned going on? I mean, obviously, the business is going really good. Are you going to be venturing into any other stuff? I mean, I know you're writing now. Um, is that kind of something that you really enjoy? Do you feel like you're really helping a, a bigger uh, audience out there? You know, it's really strange. But, uh, you know, when, when they asked me, when Huffington Post specifically asked me to do it, I was taken back. And I thought, really? I'm, you know, I don't think of myself as a person that's worth listening to for too many, too many minutes. But, uh, you know, we get so much outpouring from people who send in emails and they love it and they like the information. And the reality of it is, is that part of it I do like is I like, uh, I like people to feel like they're getting something out of it and it's great and it's wonderful to write something. That, you know, I write these articles, I do them in 30 minutes. There's no, sure. there's no planning. It's not even really an outline. I just start typing and then, you know, maybe a little, uh, maybe a little bit of, you know, editing and stuff and I pop it out. They're yeah. all philosophies and things that I truly believe and it's, uh, you know, it's the nature of the universe, and I understand that nature. Yeah. And so it's great to put it out there and have people respond to it. I had someone who wrote me an email about a week and a half ago and told me that that uh, an article I'd written gave them the courage to quit their job and go back to their teaching job. Wow. Take less money and go back and find their actual love and passion. And I got another email from them yesterday, and they actually officiated their deal. They're starting in September, and they're going to be going back to teaching. This is the person who took a $50,000 a year pay cut to go back to something that they love and that they, that they appreciate. Oh. A person's wife is uh, happy. The whole thing's amazing. So it's incredible to touch people's lives. Uh, mm-hmm. Another guy I talked to, um, he took my advice. That meant for him to uh, you know, move to Hawaii, quit his job got another job elsewhere and made a change because he realized my life, there's no do overs. Right. You can't do, you can't redo life. Right. And so it's, it's amazing that people have taken some drastic changes based on some advice that, you know, I think is good for anyone. It's good for me. I it's advice I take myself. So it's, it's, you know, it's always nice to, you know, get attention for, for, for anything you're doing well, but right. uh, it's really extra rewarding to have people contact me and email me and say, Nate, this, this has made a profound difference in my day, my minute, my week, my sure. month, my life. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it really sounds like you and I are directly on the same page. You know, um, you know, obviously you're providing content, you know, people to start believing in themselves. And obviously that's what I'm doing through the microphone here. Uh, you know, and it is beneficial to be hearing these stories, you know, because you are putting yourself more out in the public and people are responding to you in more interaction as opposed to just a business person. What is one thing that kind of keeps recurring over and over and over with these comments or emails that you're getting? Is it trying to find passion or, you know, should I get the, you know, push the fear aside? And what do you say to these people? Well, the reality of it is, is that, you know, like I always, like I always talk about, it's about, it's about finding you, yeah. whoever that person is and saying, this is what I really want out of life and pushing fears aside. It's hard. You know, I learned a foreign language. I learned Spanish. And the way I did that is I moved to South America. No one spoke English and it was the best way. You just had to go, you had to just go into it. And that's how you, that's how you, that's how you pick it up. And the same thing is true for life. The only way you're ever going to be master your fears. I mean, you know, there's a big mistake. A lot of people think that being brave means that you're not afraid. It's not. It's a mastering of your fears. Mm-hmm. You know, um, not everybody likes to stand in a large group in front of a group of people and make a statement or do something. And you don't have to do that. But sometimes there's these things that you need to do in order to take your life to that next level. You need to go out there. You need to take a risk. You need to be the person to say, hey, will you marry me? You need to have the guts to say, I want this job. You need to have the guts to say, I, yeah. I want to change. Right. I want to do something different. And, you know, the thing that's amazing about it, in the world we live in today, um, you know, upward social mobility, the channels that people use to take to get those types of gigs and jobs, they're, they're, just, they're simply not working. It's not as simple as it used to be where, well, you just, you know, it's 1930 and you you, you know, you go to college for a couple of years, you right. come home and you start bossing around guys twice your age, wearing a white shirt and a black tie. It's, it's not how it works anymore. It's, everyone goes to college now, you know, right. and you look through the media and you look through stuff and there's all kinds of goofballs like me wearing shorts around. Like I'm wearing a bathing suit right now. <laughs> and, you know, we're running multi-million dollar corporations, you know, that we start out of our bedrooms. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's, it's strange, but the reality of it is, is that I think the message of that is, is not, wow, look how neat everybody is who's able to, you know, you know, not go to college and not do all this stuff. It's not, it's not about that. Go to college, do your thing, but just realize that within you, you're 35, 40 years old, you're a single mother, whatever. 
you can go out, you can be happy without having to say, well, I should have gone to medical school. Oh, I should have done this. Oh, I should have done that. It's not too late. You can wake up. You can decide who you want to be today and right. work towards that, become that person, and go out and do something incredible. You do not have to follow the social channels of yesteryear. It's not the 1950s anymore. Being a member of the country club isn't going to get you a bunch of business deals. It's not. Right. What will get you a bunch of business deals is getting out there, meeting people, and showing them something that they want in you. Right, right. Like you said, man, reset your life. It's, uh, you know, that transformation can talk, you know, start instantly. You just have to believe it in yourself and go out there and ask people. And, uh, you know, one thing I try to proclaim on here is, you know, do the hustle, you know, get yourself out there. And you are going to have to push your fears to the side a little bit to extend your hand and make those opportunities happen for yourself. So uh, very well put. It's all about well put. attitude. It's all yeah. about attitude. That's all yeah. life is. Sure, sure. And uh, and so where do you see uh, the progression from here on out? I mean, are you do uh, more articles, you reaching out to more people. What's kind of uh, on the to-do list for you? Oh, do you know, I, I've had, uh, I've had just so many different things. You know, I've got, uh, got a, I've got an outfit that would like me to write a book. I've got another, uh, it's crazy, right? Um, <laughs> and it's awesome. It's awesome. You're doing yeah, great. People are insane, you know, yeah. but, uh, you know, there, there's all kinds of stuff that's out there like that. You know, mission belts is my love. It's my passion. Sure. It's what I do. And as, you know, as I go through things, I don't want anything to take me away from that. It's what I love. Right. Uh, but you know, in the meantime, uh, an occasional interview here, uh, program here and there, it's, it's all great. And there's some, some people have hit me up with some pretty interesting ideas that are, <laughs> They, they they seem a little too crazy, and we'll see what comes of them. But whatever. But there's there's a uh, there's definitely a uh, there's definitely a uh, there's definitely a big hole in the world, and sure. people don't know what to do. Sure, sure, and sure. You can you know like what you do, or like what I do. You know, just sometimes you know indirectly or directly. You know, uh, you're able to explain uh, the way your mind works and what's worked right. for you. And right. Sometimes that inspires other people, yeah. and if it does, you're a very lucky person. Yeah, for sure. I've been given a lot in life, and to be able to talk about it, uh, well, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to have you on here, man. I mean, honestly, it's, uh, you know, you reached out to me recently and, and asked, and I was literally shocked because I just gave, like I, you know, stated in that podcast early on, number three, you know, I just said, you know, I called up your company or emailed your company, and they got in contact with you, and you gave me a call within like 20 minutes, and I was like absolutely shocked, and then, you know, you reached out to me again, and and honestly, I think we're both on the same page, and we both really want to help this country, uh, you know, change, you know, transform, let them know that, you know, they don't have to be stuck in that rut, and uh, everything you said, attitude, hustle, uh, find your passion, whatever it is, um, you know, that's what we're both, obviously, trying to instill uh, in the world here, and, uh, you know, if we can do a little bit uh, to help an individual succeed in whatever it is that they want to succeed in, uh, we're doing our part. So honestly, I think uh, maybe we're going to have to uh, continue this. Maybe every uh, month or uh, every two months or something, we'll have to get back on and uh, and we'll have to keep on uh, preaching uh, the positive uh, vibes of, of our lives. So That's absolutely right. And the thing that's so funny about it is it's just, it's just I know there's so many people who just, they feel like they just can't get to that next spot or they're unhappy. And a lot of times it's because of undefined goals, chasing other people's dreams, and literally not sitting down and realizing, I'm just going to do my very best today to be the very best version of me. Calling you back in 20 minutes, that's what I do. So the thing, I do it. I get a phone call, a message. I don't stop my business day until everything's done. Wow. It's just how it's got to be. It's mm-hmm. Everything in life is that way. And if you treat all your relationships that way, whether they're business, personal, your church, your community group, your PTA, whatever, you will be on top of it. And people always respect that. Yeah. Now I got to finish this. I got to have one more question. I wasn't prepared to ask you this, um, but you know, you said you know you got to finish everything that's on your business plate for the day. How do you? How do you just time management? I mean, what do you do for time management? You just try to you know complete everything when it's put on your plate. You do it right away, so it's not lingering. How do you go day by day and just do everything? It's just like anything else. Um, you know, it's it's about priorities. Um, the stuff that's concerning you the most is the first thing that needs to be done. But if yeah. something small pops in, you know, like, you know, calling up and, you know, you know, you just needing to order a couple of chairs. Well, that's easy. You just get on the phone. You just do it. You don't right. say, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Just hammer that yeah. one out. Sure. But you yeah. want to make sure that, you know, it, 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 it's a process. Um, I think for people who aren't used to making quick decisions and doing a lot of stuff, writing things down, you know, the night before priority, you say, here's what I need to get done tomorrow. The item that's the most scary, the most daunting, the most stressful, the most problematic, the biggest risk, whatever that item is, attack that first. First, yeah. Do that. Mm-hmm. And then go down to the list. You know what I mean? So True. maybe calling mom is not very stressful, but maybe do that <laughs> after you've done some other stuff. But it's very easy for us to get a list of things and be like, well, 
I'll do this part first. Well, don't do that. You know, don't, 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 uh, don't, uh, don't take the cream puff stuff right off the bat. Do the hard things first. Do the hard things first and then prioritize the rest. Yeah. And your days can come together. I wish there was more time in the day. But, you know, for me, like, I, don't, I personally don't watch TV. Yeah. That, to me, I just don't have time for that. So I don't participate in that particular activity. You've got to prioritize for your life. Everyone has to be, if you like TV, that's fine. Just, you know, don't watch four hours of it. Watch okay. 30 minutes of it. Watch right. an hour of it. And realize that that's going to be part of your plan. Get everything you need to get done so you can come home at 7.30 and watch Jeopardy or whatever it is you like to watch. You know, <laughs> so my grandma watches. But, uh, you know, you, you, you know, you, you just got to you've got to take the scariest thing on your day and just attack that first. It's the yeah. only way to go. For sure. What time do you go to bed? Uh, you'll laugh. Uh, most people who are really successful will tell you that waking up really, really early is really important. Sure. Um, I wake up in the wintertime at 7.00. And in the summertime, I wake up at six. Oh, okay. Um, right. I go to bed probably. I go to bed probably between eleven and and one a.m. Sure, sure. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who will tell you I don't get enough sleep and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like a million dollars. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know what? I, <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, I certainly could probably do some things better, whatever. But that's about how much time I spend up and awake. And out of that time, uh, you know, probably most of it's uptime. There's a little bit of downtime, maybe right towards the very end of the evening. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I go to bed anxious, waking, getting ready to wake up the next day, and that feeling of waking up every day, I, I dread nothing. I wake up the next morning, and I'm excited to get after and meet my customers and do stuff. You know, in fact, as we've hired more employees and hired a new vice president of sales and things like that, it's actually, I actually kind of miss talking to the customers directly. It was fun. Oh, I still yeah. pop into the retail stores once in a while and field a few emails or I'll go to customer service and sit down there for 10 minutes and say, anybody interesting today? And if somebody's had a bad day or a problem, whatever, I'll usually call them up myself. And, you know, it's just, it's fun to be involved with people. It's fun to do those types of, those types of jobs. Mm-hmm. And it's just so exciting to, it's so exciting to be alive. I mean, yeah. you, you, I mean, I'm 34 now. One day you wake up and you're 70, yeah, I know. you know, and, and I'll tell you what, the time will go by and you have, you have, you have this decision to make right now. You can't do anything about the past. Uh, my next article, I just wrote it uh, this morning, and it's uh, it's called Yesterday. Hmm. It's about you can't change yesterday; it's over. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's, it, 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 but tomorrow is the future, and you can do something about it. Yeah, you can do something about it right now. If you make that decision today, now, when I quit my job and started Mission Belts, I quit my job that morning. By that afternoon, an hour later, I was in a store selling Mission Belts. Wow! I didn't say, "Well, nice. I can wake up on Monday and get going. I'm going to shut down for the weekend." Right. I, you can't do that. I literally got in gear and just started going for it right then. And once yeah. again, this is not a hurrah, hurrah, Nate story. <laughs> this is a life lesson story. It's an eternal truth that makes sense and it's real. Mm-hmm. If you will get after it and you will chase it down, the world is yours. The world is yours. Yeah, you know, there's a study that... <laughs> There was a study done um, and uh, they interviewed a lot of people at the retirement homes, you know, and they went around, they asked people, you know, just general questions about their life, about the Great Depression, all that stuff. And they said, you know, what's one thing that you regret? And 90% of the people out there said the exact same thing. It was taking those chances that I knew were risky and I didn't go ahead and do it. I wish I would have done, you know, skydiving or I wish I would have learned how to swim or whatever it may be. Just doing those things that at that moment you feel like, eh, I don't want to. It's not, you know, that's not me. I shouldn't do this. It's a little risky. I don't want to, you know, try this or that. Um, But like you said, when you're seven years old and you're sitting back and reliving your life, um, you know, it might come back and haunt you. So live every single day to the fullest because you never know what's going to happen. Boy, that's a fact, man. And the truth of it is, is hanging around people at different ages is important. Spending time with younger people, spending time with older yeah. people. One of my very dearest friends just barely died about three weeks ago, and he was 77. Oh, uh, found a wisdom, powerful businessman. He founded a company called Embassy Suites. Oh, yeah. Smart guy. His name is Steve Elvis, and fantastic individual. And, you know, I went and watched him, uh, you know, deteriorate over the last few months and die of cancer, unfortunately. But as I sat there and I talked to him, while I was sad to see this towering, powerful man uh, just literally deteriorating before my eyes. Yeah. The one thing, though, is I sat there and I said, this is a man who has no regrets. He's done yes. everything. Great family, great life. He's right. done fun things. He bought the sports car that he wanted to get sure. and drove the wheels off it. You know what I mean? He took family vacations. He started a business. He did what he wanted to do. And I don't think you need to do all those things in order to be successful. Right. I mean, there's people who just... My father's a teacher. He loves that. That's what my dad does. My dad's living his dream. Mm-hmm. And there are people that do that. They, they actually go out there and do that. I always admired my father because my father's one of the few people you ever meet in life who genuinely 
enjoys what he does for a living. He loves it. He yeah. absolutely loves it. If I gave him a million dollars tomorrow, he'd go back to his office the next day <laughs> and keep teaching. He loves yeah, it. Yeah. And when you can find that passion in something, you're truly happy. My father's a truly happy person. And so, you know, whenever you, whenever you're, Whenever opportunity exists, meet somebody new outside of your normal your normal social circle. Talk to somebody who's older. Get their point of view. Get their perspective. I love the idea of someone doing a study, going to old folks' homes, and asking people who are older, now that you've done this, right. what do you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have another good friend who's a much older guy. And his, son, his name's Doug. And uh, yeah, I asked Doug one time, you know, I said, you know, what's the, what's the trick to being a father? He says, Nate. By the time you figure out how to be a father, it's too late. You're a grandfather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah, you know what? That's... Uh, unfortunately, that's a lot of life. That's a <laughs> right. lot of life. But yeah. uh, but nonetheless, we can uh, we can do our very best to obtain as much knowledge and experience through others as we yeah. have now. And while I might not be a perfect father uh, to my five year old and four year old, uh, the reality is, is I do realize that I'm not. And just mm-hmm. recognizing that is power and knowledge in itself. Sure. And one thing you touched on too, you know, you said when you're happy, you know, at your job and also too, when you are internally happy, everything around you is going to be a little better. You know, you're going to see the bright side of uh, certain situations. You know, your family's going to live a little more. You're just going to be more energetic. You know, a lot of things revolve around your own personal energy that you bring to whatever it may be. So if you're happy at your job, you're going to be happy at your home. You know, I mean, not 100% of the time, but you're just going to have a better, uh, you know, edge, mental attitude and everything like that. So, so well said, man. You know, it's so funny. We, when we talked uh, <laughs> what yesterday or two days ago, you're like, yeah, I'll just come on for like 10, 15 minutes and we'll, we'll chit chat for a little bit while we're coming on a half an hour, Nate, man. And, uh, again, <laughs> again, we are, we are just, uh, crushing this. So this is, this is great. Like I said, I mean, for sure, we got to keep uh, talking and spreading the, the word here. Um, yeah, thanks again for your time. And one thing too, like you said, you know, talking to, you know, other people, meeting up with them, uh, you know, getting outside of your normal group, uh, you know, like you and me, for example, um, you know, I reached out to you, you reached out to me and, you know, you said it's all about making connections and just building trust within each other. And that's so very true. You know, I was so humble to uh, get in contact with you again, but then I realized, you know what, I put myself out there to get in contact with you and you're just doing the same for me in return. So it's not like I'm in shock of like, oh my gosh, you know, you know, Nate, you know, wants to be my best friend. It's just a... It's just a general thing. The more you give, the more you get. I mean, we just talked about. It. So it's it's awesome, and I'm I'm honored to. Uh, and you're a positive guy. You're a positive guy sure. who you know who gets it. And the reality of it is, is that you know it's it's not about financial success necessarily. Right. It's not right. about uh, you know a track record even all the time. It's about now. I don't care about the past. If I was going to hitch a ride on a car, I wouldn't care where it's been. I don't care where it's going. Yeah. And the reality of it is, is whenever you're making friends, relationships, or whatever contacts, I always surround myself with people that I think are smarter than me better looking than me, in some cases taller, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever I can get, sure, uh, I sure. want the very, very best. You know, if you're a better ping pong player, I want to hang out with you, you know? <laughs> and so the deal with the deal with it is, is that really seriously, you know, you're a guy who, who does get it. You understand, uh, right. you understand these eternal truths. They're, they're, they're obvious to you. And so it, it's, it's a good venue for, 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 for people to listen to you. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great. I've had a lot of people who've listened to your podcast and called me and, you know, have said, Hey, Nate, that was, that oh, was inspiring. Perfect. That was incredible. That was me. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's a good venue. It's a good thing. And, and the reality of it is, is that everyone can be happy. This is not one of these things. Well, well, there's only a certain percentage of people that can, you know, find happiness. Everyone can truly find happiness. You don't have to have a fancy car to be happy. You don't have to have a super successful business. You can literally make tortillas for a living in Mexico and be the happiest person alive. In fact, a lot of people I know who are the happiest do just that. Yeah. They have very simple jobs in simple places. And, you know, they're, 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 you know, my wife is from Mexico and you'll meet her dad. Her dad is one of the happiest, nicest guys you'll ever meet. And the farmer. And he just loves his life. He's got a great life. And so the reality of it is, is the message that really is out there is that you don't have to reinvent yourself. Right. You don't have to go out and make a huge change. You have to find out who you are and what makes you happy. Yeah. And, uh, I hope your listeners, uh, understand that and they feel empowered and want to go out and Oh, Make a yeah, difference in their sure. own lives. Oh, yeah. Anything they do better is going to be better. Whether oh. it's washing your car better, treating your kids better, doing something for your wife you never, you know, you don't usually do. Anything that's better is better. 
Right. Right. And it's the little things too, like you just said, you know, it's, it, it doesn't have to be huge change or a huge, you know, the, tomorrow's the day I'm going to wake up and shave my head and, you know, do all this crazy stuff. It's the little stuff. Right. It's the little stuff every single day that can really transform your life for the better. And so. those are the things that you're going to regret. Those are the things. Yeah. I wish I was nicer to my yeah, wife. Good point. I wish I'd spent more time with my kids good instead point. of staring at my iPhone all evening. I really wish that I'd given the boy the time, yeah. you know, yeah. those are the things that, those are the things that'll, that'll haunt you later. Sure, sure. Well, Nate, you uh, again, <laughs> awesome. Uh, so honored to have you back on. Like I said, we're gonna have to keep in touch here. Um, I will uh, be, you know, letting everybody know where they can uh, read your blogs and all that stuff, Huffington Post here, and uh, keep on writing some great articles. Keep on kicking butt in the uh, belt world, and uh, keep on giving back, man. It's it's a great story, and like you said, um, you know, for myself, I wanted to really, I felt like I was lacking, you know, giving out to people and, and volunteering and all that stuff. But you just, you know, hit it on the head, you know, just. For Finding companies that give back and, and you're doing something, uh, you know, good, you know, in a small sense, but it's still something in the right direction. So for that, uh, yeah, appreciate it. Now, and the other thing is important to remember, I don't give money to, you know, people to, you know, to help them, whatever, because I feel guilty. I don't do it because sure. I think it's a good business move. I do it because I think it's a good thing to do. And uh, if you want to be happy, do something good for somebody else and you will be happy. I'm a very happy person. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the more and more I do, the happier I get. Sure, sure. Well, Nate, man, thanks again. Uh, we'll keep in touch and uh, have a great um, rest of your summer here. And we'll, uh, we'll we'll talk soon. Thanks very much. Have a great day. You too. Thanks again to Nate for coming on the podcast. Man, he just brings some great energy to this thing. I love it. I love talking to him. And I love that he has provided about 800 families with financial aid in transforming their lives, um, that is remarkable. And one thing that was very true when he stated in the beginning of the podcast, you know, I, I told him, I, I want to do something. I really do. I want to start, start like a nonprofit or something. But he's like, you know what? Just as long as you find companies that are giving back, you're doing, you're doing something. And that's so true. So, um, you know, you guys out there listening, make sure that if you are going to be buying a product, maybe search a little extra and see if there's a company out there that's giving back to an organization or a charity or whatever it may be. You know, if you drink coffee, maybe try to buy fair trade coffee or, you know, whatever it may be. So there's a lot of ways that we can give back by just living life, you know, by doing our part, by just buying products. And those companies are giving back. So we're kind of helping the cause in a little way, but every little bit helps, you know, just like anything. You know, and a couple of things I took away from the interview, like always, um, you guys can find the tips that I pulled away from every single episode on the website, operationselfreset.com forward slash tips. And there you will find the most recent episodes from the podcast and the seven tips that I pulled away from each and every episode. And one thing that I, a couple of things I pulled away from this interview, you know, he talked about it's not too late to change and that's so true. You know what, even though there's a lot of people out there that may be listening to this that are, um, you know, well established in their careers and in their lives, you know, it's never too late to say, you know what, I had enough of this, I need to to change in this direction or I need to do this or that. Um, You know what, there's so many times we all feel like, oh, I'm way too invested to, to change now. You know, you're going to college, for example. You're already three years into your degree. Well, forget it. It's too late now. I, I have to stick with business. I, I don't want to pursue my dream of, um, you know, uh, publications or acting or whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, you know what, maybe take that time. You know what, suck it up and pay that extra little bit to extend your college degree into a direction that you want to do because you will be doing that for a very long time. And if you don't like it, you can change it up again because you know what? Life's too short to continue down a path that's not providing you with any value or or like quality of life, you know, because it's just not worth it. So, and you know, one thing that Nate always talks about, it's all about attitude. You know what? If you bring great attitude, um, you can get into some great companies. You know, I mean, like himself, you know, Nate only hires people that are really nice, you know, and they don't have a neat ego. So, you know, those are qualities that you got to think of when you are presenting yourself to other individuals. Nobody wants to have somebody that, or hire somebody that has an ego the size of, you know, a air balloon, you know, you don't want that, you know, you want to be just a nice, true individual, be yourself and everything will be okay. And honestly, that study that I did share about uh, people going to old age homes and asking them, you know, what's the one thing regret was not taking the risk. That is a true article. I will try to find that and reference that in the show notes and you can get all the show notes from this podcast episode. Go to operationselfreset.com 
forward slash podcast 013. And there you will find all of the show notes, all of the articles that Nate Hosefell wrote on the Huffington Post and everything that we have talked about in today's episode. And referring back to kind of the intro about time management, there was a couple of things that Nate did say in this interview that um, I want to share with you guys in kind of slingshotting the time management uh, forum and or discussion. And a couple of things that he said was, you know, he writes down a lot of things that he has to do within the day. So that kind of prioritizes his own um, list when he wakes on up. Um, You know, he attacks the hardest things first. And that's a good way to kind of go through your list. You know, maybe before you go to bed, write out a list of what you have to do for tomorrow and prioritize each one. You know, obviously number one would be the hardest and they're on, you know, down. And um, it's a good thing to do because in the morning, either way you have to do it. So why not just knock it out? You know what? Instead of saying, oh, I'll do it after lunch. And then you say, well, I'll have to do it after my two o'clock meeting. And the next, you know, it's four o'clock, you're ready to go and you didn't accomplish that thing that you had had to do because it was scaring you or it was hard or whatever it may be. Just knock it out now. Just do it, get it over with and move on the list and, and work on down the list. Um, another thing he shared was, you know, reducing TV time. You know, if you really love a show, instead of watching two and a half hours, try to narrow it down to an hour. Or if it's, you know, one show you love or you love a couple of shows, maybe just narrow it down to one show. So you're only watching TV for 30 minutes instead of, you know, an hour, hour and a half or what have you. And the last thing that he really shared was wake up excited. I think that's a great way to start your day, especially when time management is very tough. It's tough to wake up excited when you know you don't have time to do you you don't even have time to be excited because you're so swamped i guilty right here and i know you guys listening too so we'll dive into that a little more we'll try to you know get together some great ideas and concepts i already have a whole list of things that we can do individually to extend our day and make make the most out of it and like i said before if you guys have some tips that are working for yourself feel free to email them to me support at operation self reset.com i will incorporate them into the podcast podcast and I will give you name reference. So if you provide a great tip, I will give you a shout out to the world on this podcast. So how awesome is that, right? So again, guys, thank you so much for taking the time listening to this podcast. Um, If you haven't already, please leave a review on iTunes and also subscribe. And if you get a chance and if you are talking to somebody that you um, enjoy talking to, hopefully you do. That's the reason why you're talking to them. Let them know about this podcast. Tell them how awesome it is. So guys, take care. Have a great day. Make it a great day. We will catch you in podcast number 14. And once again, I will try to pump these podcasts out, but I'm not going to force them out. So keep on working towards your ultimate goal of success, change, reset, transform your life one little thing at a time. And again, just try something a little different. Maybe it's waking up five minutes early instead of, you know, instead of waking up at 630, wake up at 625 and don't hit that snooze button. Man, can you imagine all the things you'll get done with an extra five minutes? Because we're always counting those minutes right before we have to leave the work. Oh, shoot, I'm two minutes late. Well, because that throws off the whole schedule. So wake up extra five minutes early. Give it a try. See, see how it works out for you. So we'll take care, guys. Thanks again so much, and we will talk to you guys soon.